Hey everyone, today I want to do a follow-up video on how to connect any subwoofer to your system. So there is a Sonos sub and it's great, and I have one, and it's $700. So I was thinking it would be really great if I could connect a much less expensive sub. Uh, and you see on Amazon, you can get a sub for 150 bucks, 200 bucks, and it will be perfectly fine for most applications. There's even a monoprice one here for $80. So my thought is if we could figure out a way to rig this up to an existing Sonos system, that would save us a lot of money. And I happen to have this Polk Audio subwoofer lying around. And, you know, it has these line level inputs. So that's great if you have a way to get a signal out of Sonos. But it got me thinking, there are these speaker level inputs here. And that's designed so that you can connect your receiver. So could I use this IKEA speaker that I already broke apart and connect that somehow to the subwoofer. So you see here from my disassembly video, uh, if you take apart this IKEA speaker, you know, it's really easy to get into and you can see the terminals here for the woofer. So what if I connected those to the speaker level inputs on my sub? So let's give it a try. So the quick and dirty way to do this is I just fed the speaker wires through the port as a temporary way to do this. So here's my theory. Inside the Sonos, there is an electronic crossover that divides the full range signal into a signal for the woofer and the tweeter. And that signal from the woofer goes into its own amplifier because this is a bi-amplified speaker. And for that, we, if we were to get that amplified signal from where the woofer connects, send it off into the speaker level inputs, on our sub, we'd be able to essentially feed a signal to the sub and have that working as part of the Sonos system. All right, so now that the wires are very temporarily hooked up to the woofer terminals and fed through the port, we can go ahead and plug them into the speaker level inputs on the back of this sub and find out whether this little jerry rig system will actually work. All right, there we go. So. Here we go. Plug the sub in, plug the Sonos in, put on some music, and moment of truth, look at that. We have a sub that's actually playing along. So this is a super easy way to turn, say, a pair of these IKEA speakers into a nice 2.1 system. All right, so now I knew there was a signal coming out that I could use at the subwoofer level, but I wasn't really sure whether the Sonos amplifier was rolling off the lowest frequencies to protect the woofer from over excursion. So really what I wanted to know is whether or not the amplified woofer signal was going all the way down to 20 Hertz, which you'd want for a subwoofer. So uh, what I did is I fed a low frequency sweep test tone uh, that starts at 150 Hertz and goes down to 20. And you can see in the upper left hand corner the frequencies and obviously the subwoofer doesn't go quite as low as we want it to but with this i feel pretty confident that it is sending a signal all the way down to 20 hertz or thereabouts so this is suitable for a subwoofer uh, input all right so now we know we can get a signal out of the sonos that can drive a subwoofer and so now we just got to figure out what to do with this janky wire sticking out of the port because this will not do so looking in the cabinet, I could see a place where I could mount some terminals. So I had these old binding posts. So I figured I'd take the bolts off the back and just take those items out. And then I could throw the cup away and just directly mount these to the cabinet. And I decided since I was in here anyway, I would over engineer it and I would install two pairs. So if you're just installing a subwoofer output, you could just do it there, which would be a good spot. But what I wanted to do is install one pair of binding posts at the top to get the tweeter output and another one below for the woofer output. And inside the cabinet, you can see there's a great spot here at the top where you can put all those items. And so I measured everything out, grabbed my drill and just drilled four holes here for the posts and slid them right in. So it was a pretty easy job to get these things installed. And you can see that's what the first two holes look like. And once everything's installed, it looks like this, which I think is pretty sharp and I'll explain how they're set up. So at the top here, this is the tweeter. So I've jumped off that connection and I've connected that to the top pair of binding posts so I could play around with biamping later. 
And the bottom one, I connected from the woofer terminal around to the bottom binding post here. So I can use that to hook up a subwoofer. And it's worth noting that some subwoofers have both a speaker level input and output. And mine doesn't, but if you have a subwoofer with this, you could actually use this two binding post setup to wire both of those up. So essentially the signal could come out of the speaker into your sub, and then you could plug the speaker level outputs from the sub back into the speaker. And what that would do is filter out the very low frequencies at the crossover point between the sub and the speaker, and that would let the woofer not work as hard. But for my purposes, I'm just going to leave the woofer and tweeter wired up to the binding post so I can play around with some biamping things later. So just dropping the screws back into the front panel, pushing in these little grill peg holders, and uh, we're ready to go. So that was pretty easy. And overall, this looks nice. And you can see the wire coming out of the bottom binding posts. And now I can just plug this back into my sub. Easy peas. And we're back in business. So this is now my very inexpensive Sonos 2.1 system. And the bass sounds fantastic. So I'm very happy with this setup. And it was so easy to do. It's so simple. I wish I had thought of this years ago, but uh, then again, I don't think I would have wanted to tear apart my nice pair of Play 3s to put binding posts in them. But these IKEA speakers are so inexpensive, uh, I feel like they're really fun to tinker with, and you're not really uh, putting too much on the line by cutting into them. So yeah, this is a really inexpensive way for, say, 300 350 bucks to have a 2.1 uh, Sonos system that sounds really clean and uh, has great bass. So thanks for watching.